ゴードンさんはグッドニューという、えー、いわゆるファ,ッファッションの選択のためのアプリを開発されて、えー、多くのオーストラリアの消費者の方々が、えー、それを利用している、えー、その第一人者代表でもあるわけです。で今日はゴードンさんに持続可能なあーサービスや商品その選択にエシカルな消費者っていうのはどのように貢献できるのかとこういうことについてお話を伺いたいと思います、えー、まず最初にあのゴードンさんご自身の紹介どのような取り組みをなさっているのか、えー、そのお話をまず聞かせてくださいそしてその後に、えー今日の現状の中で、えー、オーストラリアがどうなっているのかということも合わせてご報告いただければと思います。So we created an organization called Ethical Consumers Australia six or seven years ago and we interviewed hundreds of consumers and we asked them how they go about their shopping, what do they want in the products and brands that they buy and buy from and what's stopping them make more sustainable choices. <clears throat> so, we then, using those results to run some experiments about what kinds of tools they would like. And to cut a long story short, we, we learned a few key things.、Um, a really important point is that consumers are not seeking to buy a sustainable or ethical product. They're seeking to buy a product that meets their needs, that solves some problem in their life. Sometimes the consumer will not choose the most ethical product because it doesn't meet their, their functional needs, their, their aspirations in terms of what job they're trying to do. But if we can get them to choose the best product that does, the most sustainable product that does meet their needs, then we're moving the choices away from the worst products towards better products, even if not necessarily the best product. In fact, one of the things that we always say at Good On You is that the perfect is the enemy of the good, meaning trying to only get consumers to buy the absolute most sustainable product will often turn them away from even trying to do better. So that takes me to Good On You. After some of these experiments, we decided to focus on one area, which is clothing and fashion, to start with. Our ambition is to Essentially, rate nearly every brand in the market so that if you're a consumer and you see a product you like, you can look up and see how sustainable that the brand behind that product is, or even perhaps how sustainable the product itself is. So, these lead me to the principles underlying our rating system because what we have developed is a rating system that looks at more than 60 different key issues. More than 500 data points for each brand about how that brand impacts on the most material sustainability issues in the clothing industry. Brands should be transparency. Brands have an obligation, in our view, to tell consumers how products are made so the consumer can exercise their right to make responsible choices. I said before, the rating system. Should cover the whole market if it can. It should be able to be applied to every brand in the market. And of course, it should look at the full life cycle. It should look at how the products the brand makes impact on the environment and on workers and animals from the moment the raw materials are manufactured right through to disposal or reuse of the product at the end of its life cycle. <clears throat> and then finally, the The system must be easy for consumers to use. It must be,、uh, take not very much effort for the consumer to draw on that rich ratings information to make a decision as part of their normal life. But right now in,、um, in Melbourne, like in many other countries, one of Australia's biggest cities,、um, the, the pandemic is really getting quite out of control and we're having many more cases than we would like. And Melbourne is in, in full lockdown. Now, I live in a different state, a different prefecture called New South Wales. In Sydney,、um, we are being careful. We are not having nearly as many cases. So,、um, cross fingers, touch wood,、uh, that、uh, the problem will be solved in Melbourne very soon and around the world.、Um, and, and I hope that the virus does not affect your country any more than it is right now. 
、この地球規模でですね、えー、このコロナの感染が流行っているわけですけれども、まあ、そういった中で私たちは生活し生きていかないといけないと。でそのためには私たち自身がそのコロナに対してこのエシカルな消費というものが何か果たす役割っていうのがあるんだろうかどういうことをやればですね私たちがエシカルな社会を実現するために貢献できるのか私が4年前にゴードンさんにお話を聞いたときにですね、こういうことをゴードンさんに言ったのを覚えてます。貧困や飢餓、そして不幸を生み出すとするんならば、その最上級の洋服であっても、それは全く美しくないんだということをゴードンさんが言われたのを覚えていますけれども、まさにそういうことをきちっと実現するためには、その、消費行動というものをですね、もしくはライフスタイルを変えていくことが必要だと思いますけれども、まあそういうアドバイスをいただきたいんですけど、よろしくお願いいたします。Yeah, so let's, let's talk about the impact of COVID on the industry, but first of all, I'll talk a bit about、um, the point you're making there about the human rights issues in the, in the fashion industry. So, so fashion is,、um, A fairly big industry in the world. It's responsible probably for seven or eight percent of, of carbon emissions. It employs 80 million people around the world.、Um, most of those people are women. Most of those people are working in less developed countries, countries like Bangladesh, India, Vietnam, China,、uh, and、uh, working in the production of clothes, whether that is in growing cotton or processing fabrics or Um, working in the cut, make, trim factories. And very few of those people are getting paid an adequate living wage. And many of those people are working in unsafe environments. So there are some real issues about the, the safety and the livelihoods of people working in well, all industries that、um, are imported from less developed countries and indeed some from our own countries. But、uh, the, the developed countries, I mean.、Um, but our focus has been on, on fashion as one of the major world industries.、Um, and there are many human rights issues that organisations are working to address. And there has been some progress on some, some issues. I think it's been quite remarkable how many elements of the fashion industry have responded to civil society calls to be more transparent about where they are making their clothes what sorts of which factories they're using、um, there has been some progress and also some backsliding some stepping back on engagement of unions and one of the key ways to protect workers rights of course is for Workers' rights to freedom of association and collective bargaining to be respected. And、uh, as I say, there are, there are steps forward and steps back there, and there is some work from some brands to support that to happen、uh, and to work with the factory suppliers to make it happen. And then there are instances、uh, where factories just you know, take action against the unionised workforces and reduce the abilities of the workers to. Represent themselves, and even just very recently, there's been a report of that happening. So, that's the background. What's the impact of COVID 19 on the fashion industry? Well, of course, the first impact was that shops all over the world closed down in March 2020, and there was very substantial reduction in income、uh, and revenue for. All parts of the fashion industry and the big brands and the big retailers、uh, had massive reductions in their income because they didn't have people walking into the stores to buy the clothes.、Uh, a few months ago, the projection was a 30% loss in income. With the second wave that's happening in many countries, it could well be higher than that. Now, naturally, the first thought of those brands was to reduce their costs. Stop paying money, and many of them decided to stop paying the factories, their suppliers, for orders that they had already placed. And this is obviously causing a great deal of 
harm and pain to not just those suppliers, but the workforces who have inevitably lost their jobs as a result. Now, under pressure from customers and civil society, quite a lot of brands have stepped back and have decided that they will pay their suppliers for the orders and that they will try and support the suppliers to keep people employed. But nevertheless, there are many, many people who are being affected. And of course, in many less developed countries, the governments are just not in a position to pay for the sorts of furlough or job keeping schemes that we've seen in some countries like the United Kingdom and Australia and to a lesser extent, the United States. So that's, that's the first impact, a lot of impact on uh, workers because their, their employers have, um, have lost contracts because the brands have lost sales. Um, so our position would be that brands should be looking after their workers. Uh, they're in a much better position to do so than the factories that supply them and the, than the workers themselves. And there are campaigns from the Workers' Rights Consortium and an organisation called Remake trying to keep the heat on brands to pay and many of them have, as I said, changed their policy and um, agreed to pay. So that's the first impact. The, the second impact of that reduction in cash flow by brands is that some of the projects that brands were working on to do better, um, particularly in the environment area, but also to some extent labour, some of those projects have been, many of those projects have been put on hold. I mean, the, the, the direction came from the top saying, if you don't have to spend money, don't spend it. So those projects are just waiting until the brands are in a stronger financial position. Um, the third impact, of course, is that people are not shopping in store, but what they are doing, there has been a very big increase in online shopping, as much as 100% increase in April compared to before. Um, so, uh, for the quarter as a whole, maybe between 25 and 50% increase in online shopping. Now that increase in online shopping is dwarfed by the reduction in physical shopping because online shopping still only makes 18, 20% of all shopping. Uh, but nevertheless, what we're seeing there is a really strong behavior change by consumers. And it would be fair to predict that this will increase consumers comfort with online shopping it will strengthen the systems for delivery of products and consumers probably won't go back to in the same extent to offline shopping post pandemic and you know absent a vaccine we are going to see restrictions coming up on what it's like to go shopping anyway so i think that an increase in online shopping is a very um, key outcome of the COVID environment. And when we're thinking about sustainability, we need to think about what does that mean? In some ways, it's good. We can more easily provide consumers with information about products online, perhaps, than in-store. Obviously, a downside is there is a bit more carbon emitted by um, the delivery services and the returns that happen with online shopping. But there are encouraging uh, measures in place to reduce the rate of returns. So the fourth impact of COVID on the fashion industry is that the type of clothing that people are purchasing is quite different. Um, dramatic increases in certain kinds of products, what we might call loungewear, clothes for working at home, uh, active wear, certain kinds of running shoes. You can't go to the gym anymore in many countries, so you, people turn to running or other outdoor sports for exercise. Um, you don't have to go into the office, so you don't need so many work style clothes. Uh, and finally, the one I want to talk about the most is the changing attitudes to sustainability. It's not, it doesn't necessarily follow that if we have a pandemic, people will think more about sustainability, but there are really strong evidence that people are thinking more about sustainability post pandemic. I guess they're starting to understand the risks of our modern globalized system of supply. So not only have consumers become more interested in sustainability in the last 18 months, but, but brands have also stepped up. And in last year's Fashion Transparency Index, we saw 40% of brands uh, being transparent about their first tier suppliers, up from 32% in 2017. So post COVID, we've actually seen evidence that consumers are even more interested in sustainability, as I was saying before. Um, We've got um, big names in fashion that are saying that they're hearing this from their customers. This fashion world, 
ファーストファッションというのが出てくることによってライフサイクル全体で考えるとそこには人権問題や労働問題やいやそうではない地球環境問題が潜んでいることが分かってきたとそしてそういう中で、えー、このコロナによってですねオンラインショップが登場してきたでこのオンラインショップはどういうことなのかっていうとそこでまた貧しい人にどんどんしわ寄せがいくようなことも起きてきてるじゃあ少々は何ができるのかっていうことを考えた時にまあ一つ明るい話題はゴードンさんから伺ったのは消費者の選択眼がだんだんついてきてる良くなってきてる、まあ、これはコロナ以前の頃からファッションの世界ではあるらしいんですけれどもいわゆるそのサステナブルファッションであるとかエシカルファッションそういうものを通してですね消費者の選択眼がちゃんと見るようになってきたとこれはポストコロナの中で消費者が貢献できる非常にいい点ではないのかというお話であったと思いますけれどもそういう解釈でよろしいでしょうか。Yes, I think it's right that、uh, it's definitely,、um, there's definitely evidence that consumers were thinking more and more about sustainability before COVID 19. And there's a lot of,、um, there is certainly some very early signs that people will be thinking about it even more after COVID 19.、Uh, the change towards online shopping is very, very concrete. The change towards more sustainability is there are a lot of factors pointing to this. There are Brands, there are CEOs of retailers, there are small ethical brands,、uh, there are industry associations, and there are research bodies all predicting that consumers will be more interested in sustainability. Obviously, we don't have the absolute hard data yet that they are post COVID searching more than they were. We are certainly seeing a lot more people coming to our side, which is a small indication that people are、uh, researching this information and more inf- in- interested. Um, but I think、uh, obviously we'll need a bit more time to tell for sure how much that increase has happened. So, for the first time, I think that the first time I was in the world, 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 I was in the world. その気候危機考えるといわゆる LCA 的な視点から考えるとファッションが与える影響は非常に大きいとでそういう意味で考えるとエシカル消費という大きい枠で考えた時に私たちはこういう気候変動気候危機に対してどっか貢献できるんだろうかとこういうことについてアドバイスがあれば教えていただきたいんですけどね。Of course, there are a number of types of consumption that impact on global warming. And of course,、um, stationary energy use in the home and transport are two of the biggest、um, industries that affect greenhouse gas emissions. But fashion industry, the fashion industry also plays a role here.、Um, the United Nations Environment Program has. Has been circulating an estimate of around 8% of global emissions coming from the fashion industry, which is a fairly significant proportion for one industry alone. Puts it on par with perhaps the livestock and aviation industries. Well, let's say the aviation industry pre COVID.、Um, one silver lining of COVID, of course, is、uh, some less consumption and a lot less air travel. So that will benefit our global. Greenhouse gas emissions for a period, anyway. But the, so the key point here is that fashion is indeed, as you say, Professor Nakaharo, a significant contributor to global greenhouse gas emissions. And one of our goals at Good On You is to make sure that consumers can find and、um, avoid brands that are not addressing their environmental obligations to the earth, that are not addressing the need to reduce. Greenhouse gas emissions and, and, and respond to the climate crisis. And so the Good, Hat, good, the good On You rating system puts a, a fair weight on a brand's approach to climate change inside our environmental score. So our environmental score looks at, for background, it looks at resource use, 
It looks at climate change and greenhouse gas emissions. It looked at, looks at water impacts. It looks at chemical impacts and so on. And so the climate change has a fairly significant part of our greenhouse gas, uh, sorry, our environment score. So the basic idea, of course, is that if there's, there's two really strategies for consumers here. Of course, a very important strategy is to reduce less, to um, use things until they end their life, to share them with friends rather than throwing them away, to send them to resale sites rather than throwing them away. So really promoting the circular economy principles so we don't waste the resources that we have dug out of the ground, the resources we have used, the energy we have used in creating products. So, so there's, a, there's a strategy about choosing in the first place and there's a strategy about how you behave as a consumer to ensure that you minimise your impact on climate change. So not only does Good On You help you make choices, um, new product choices that reduce uh, the impact on the environment, including reduced carbon emissions, we also promote and work with other organisations to promote consumer behaviour that is uh, less impactful on the climate. So, um, yeah, in summary, if we can give consumers information about which brands are impacting less on climate change and if consumers prefer those brands, that helps drive all brands or most brands to take action to compete, to, to look good on climate change. And so we are seeing brands adopt the science-based targets um, which we reward them for in our rating system. We are seeing brands reporting to the CDP climate score. Uh, so those two things will, will boost your scoring good on you. And so the more brands that do that, the better for the climate. Um, and secondly, we are uh, inviting or uh, providing information to consumers about how they can also change their own behaviour to reduce um, resource use generally and energy and greenhouse gas use in particular. え、最後にえ、ゴドンさんにえ、お話しいただきたいのは、これからの消費者課題ですね。いわゆる消費行動エシカル消費の課題ってのはどういう課題があると思いますか I guess the the biggest challenge is how do we make this happen faster? Now, we know that there are consumers out there who are looking to make better choices and we know that they can get some information from projects like Good On You or Ethical Consumers UK or other projects that will give them information, but we are nowhere near reaching all consumers. We are nowhere near providing information in all product categories. So how can we scale this so that it becomes routine and everyday habit for, for <clears throat> if not every consumer, at least half the consumers to say, I'm shopping today or I need to solve a problem today. What's the best way to do this? I have these really easy to use resources which apply not just to fashion, but to every product category with the appropriate resources. And how do we make that a habit for consumers so that, that enough consumers do it, that it just doesn't make business sense to not improve your impact on workers and the environment? IT また、あの、エシカルコンシューマー もしくは、もしかするとこうやって通訳を通して私はゴドンさんと話してます。もっと多くの言語があるこの社会の中でどういうそういうハンディキャップを乗り越えていくのかということも同時に考えないといけないと思いますけれども、その辺ゴドンさ
our first model was you need to come to us, you need to come to our website or our app, get our app, and then you can get the information and make choices. But it would be better if we could also have that information available where you're already shopping. So if we can work with retailers to publish this information, and indeed we are working with one global retailer called Farfetch, and they use Good On You information to tell their customers, and they have many more customers than we have users, to tell their customers which brands are doing better. And so our vision is that if many, many retailers would come to us and use our information to tell their customers which brands are doing better, and you know they know that a good percentage of their customers, maybe 50%, will like them more if they have that information available and would possibly use their store more if that information was available. So that's one way is to get the information to where the consumers already are. In terms of moving from fashion to other categories like um, personal care products or or cars or food or whatever, um, we will need to come up with different solutions Good On You is established as a business. Our aim is to be able to scale as our income grows. We are a business that has uh, the social impact, the social purpose as the key driving idea. Um, But we have chosen to be a business so that we can try and scale and reach many more people. Yes, we're reaching a few million at the moment each year, but we want to make that 20 million, 200 million and develop new products in new categories and partner with other people, whether they're retailers or whether they're other civil society organisations, um, to reach people in other places, other demographics, other countries. どうも長い時間ありがとうございました。あの最後にまあ冒頭ゴードンさんがおっしゃいましたけれども、えー、徳島、えー、そして日本の、えー、方々にあのメッセージがあればぜひお願いします。I'm very happy to speak to the people in Tokushima and Japan. I've been to Japan a few times and I've even been to Tokushima.、Um, and、uh, I hope that you will be safe through this very difficult time of COVID. It's a very uh, challenging uh, time for, the, for every country. And I also hope that you can be inspired by Sustainable Development Goal 12 about. More、um, sustainable systems for consumption and production, and tell the producers that you know that you have a right to know how the products you buy are purchased, that the way things are made is not a secret that producers are entitled to keep to themselves. You, as a consumer, have a right to know how. Products are made. You have a right to know how they impact on the things you care about, whether they be workers' rights, the environment, climate change, animal welfare. And so you should claim that right. You should assert that right and tell the shops that you go to that you want to know how things are made and they should publish that information. But overall, I hope you keep well through these very difficult times. Arigatou gozaimasu. Arigatou gozaimashita.